This program is brought to you by the Deeper Life Bible Church, located at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11. How can you say you love God, you don't love your husband, you don't love your children, you don't love your employer, you don't love your pastor, you are a hypocrite. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen with his eyes, how can he love God whom he has not seen? food you throw away money and yet some poor people are in the church some poor people are wearing rag maybe I'm not talking to those of you watching us from America but I know in Jamaica we are poor we are not as material, materially rich like those of you in Europe and America and Canada we may not be as rich as you are. But what we are asking God is to make us rich in the Spirit. My friend, I ask you, in what way have you expressed your love to God? Now, I heard somebody making an exposition and I was listening to another preacher. He said, do you know the link between love and obedience? Have you thought about it? There is an there is a link. If you say you love the Lord but you are not obedient to his word, you are a hypocrite. Let me say that again so you can get me. I say, I didn't hear what the man says. Hear me good. If you say you love the Lord and you are disobedient to his word, you are disobedient to his will, you are disobedient to the vision he had given you, you are a hypocrite. Because it is that love is contradiction in action. Jesus said, how can you say you love God whom you have not seen and you hate your neighbor whom you see daily? How can you say you love God and you don't love your wife? You are a liar. How can you say you love God, you don't love your husband, you don't love your children, you don't love your employer, you don't love your pastor, you are a hypocrite. Jesus said, huh? it's in the Bible, both in first epistle of John and the gospel according to John. You know, John is always referred to as the beloved of Jesus. And when you read his epistle, you see how many times he used the word beloved. Because when you have embraced the love of God, for God so loved the world, he gave. So, when you embrace the love of God, you become the beloved. In First John, look at what he says here. 
chapter 4 from verse 19. He said, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, hear me? I didn't write this, you know. This has been written before my parents were born and my grand grandparents were born. If a man say, I love God and he hated his own brother or hated his own sister or hated his own wife or husband and children or parents, he is a liar. If that is not in your Bible, throw that Bible away. It's not the, uh, it's not the authentic Bible. Throw it away. It says, we love God because he first loved us. That's verse 19. Verse 20 now said, if a man say, I love God and hated his own brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen with his eyes, how can he love God whom he has not seen? That's a question for you. My friend, do you truly love God? If you love God, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. There's a connection between love and obedience. Believe you me. Always ask yourself, do I truly love God? Look at what John 15 says. In John chapter 15. Mm. In John chapter 15. Verse 14. He said. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever. I command you. Huh? You are my friends. If you do whatsoever. I command you. God chose Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 10 to be the first king in Israel. And God gave him an express instruction as how to deal with the enemies. But when Saul went to the camp of the enemy of God, he did what he felt was right, but not according to the instruction from God. And that was how he was deposed, dismissed, demoted. That was how Saul lost the very unique privilege of being the first king in Israel. Before that period, Israel never had any human king. God was their king. God was their exclusive leader. He guides them by his spirits and through the prophets. But Saul, the son of Kish, had a unique privilege of being anointed by Samuel and appointed by God. But you know what he said? I fear the people. And then I disobeyed God. You didn't hear it. He said, I feared the people whom God told him to lead, you know. And he disobeyed the word of God. And what was the consequence? He was dismissed. The unfortunate thing was that he was even trying to rationalize and justify his disobedience. You know, this is where I love God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. God revealed by the word of knowledge to Samuel. Samuel was in his own house. Saul was in the palace. And while Samuel was at home, God revealed to him what Saul had done. There are some people who don't believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
I pray God will embarrass you with that gift. <laughs> you didn't understand me. When God gives you the gift, one day will show you a dream, give you a revelation, give you the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith. Like what happened to Moses, you will drop the rod in your hand, it will become a snake, and then you run. <laughs> and God will say, come back, pick it up. Samuel was in his house. Saul was in his house. But God revealed to Samuel in his house what Saul had done wrong. And in the morning, Samuel woke up and went to the house of Saul. Have you done what God told you to do? Yes, sir. I've done everything God told me to do. But well, how about this noise about the goats and the sheep at your backyard? Oh yes, I brought them back when I killed the enemy so we can sacrifice them to God. Is, it, is God interested in sacrifices? Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifices? Disobedience, listen, I know many of you don't know this because sometimes when I see there are some witchcraft workers in the church. Don't you know that disobedience is equivalent to witchcraft work? You know there are some of you hearing me. You, you disobey your pastor with impunity. You disobey the word of God with impunity. In other words, what will God do if I disobey? What is wrong in adultery and fornication, by the way? Am I the first one to commit adultery? Am I the first one to steal and tell a lie? Am I the first one to, to visit um, um, Obia Walker? Am I the first one to do evil? Why are you trying to make it look big? Hmm? So what is wrong in taking rum and taking some ganja? What is wrong with it? My friend, and you go to church and you take the Lord's communion and you say come back and drink rum, smoke ganja and take other kinds of weed and cocaine. Hmm? You are in the secret society and you go to church and take the Lord's Supper. No wonder. Strange things have happened to you. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Hey, I will be the happiest man on earth if all my listeners across the world prospers in 2021 beyond their expectation. And I prophesy to you, all of you hearing me, if you will make up your mind right away and say, I lay my hands on the plow, to be obedient to God all the days of my life, you will prosper in Jesus' name. Your prosperity will be in abundance that those who hate you, they'll be coming to beg you for help in the name of Jesus. I say, God will give you more than you can manage. If you will say, Pastor Odi, I am hearing you well, and I'm making up my mind that from this night, my vow is to become absolutely obedient to God in every way from his word as long as I can see it in the Bible. You know, Saul could have retained that prestigious position. Believe you me. Saul could have retained that envious position because nobody in his family had ever been a king. Neither his father was a king. But he took it for granted. Huh? Look at what Samuel told Saul in this first Samuel chapter 15. I know some of you know it, but there are many persons who don't know. The consequence of disobeying God. Listen to me. If you disobey God, you don't love God. If you love God, you, you, you will obey Him at all costs by all means. Let me say, my, let me say it again. Anytime you disobey God, you may not say anything with your mouth, but it's 
a demonstration of your hate for God. Go and read Exodus chapter 20. When you get to verse 5 in that Exodus chapter 20, you see where God says, All those who worship idol in disobedience to my express instruction, all those that keep images, all those that consult all these witch workers, divinators, necromancy, soothsayers, palm readers, God says, they hate me. That's why they do it. I don't want to remove my eyes from here, but I can hear somebody saying, that, is there anything like that in the Bible? I have opened it ready. You know, I open my Bible fast. You know. Exodus chapter 20. Look at what he says in verse 5. I wasn't looking at, at it that time. I just, that's how the Holy Spirit helps me. You know. And that's where I want to bring you inside of it. You know. It says in verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. This is God who is saying this. So when somebody blatantly, blatantly, I am not talking of what you may call inadvertently, but blatantly disobey God, disrespects God, God says, you hate me. That's why you did it. When somebody knows this thing is bad, this one is bad, this one is bad, and you know it will hurt God. God says, you know I'm a jealous God. Eh? Isaiah chapter 42. You know I'm a jealous God. I cannot share my glory with any other person. And even though you know it, but you do it to hurt me. Come on, my friend. Don't hurt God. I know you may never hear it from other preachers who are not telling you the truth. Don't hurt God because God will hurt you. Don't let anybody tell you that you can be hurting God, disrespecting God, and God will be blessing you. It's a lie. That theology is from hellfire. Don't hurt God. See right there, you see the word. It says, all those in that verse 5, uh, verse 5 says, at the bottom end there, eh? it says, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Of them that hate me. Hello, don't hate God. If you don't check, if you don't believe you me, I'm, I've not closed this first Samuel. I'm coming back here. As I said that thing, somebody is right there arguing in his mind. Are there some people who hate God? God did not only speak about it in the New Test, in the Old Testament. If you go to Romans chapter one, Romans chapter one, you'll be so surprised where the Bible spoke and wrote it down about those that hate God. They hate God by their actions. Look at it. Romans chapter 1 uh, from verse 28. Almost unbelievable. But it is true. Uh, you see what it says here? From being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, Deceit, malignity, whisperers, verse 30 says, watch it now, backbiters, the next word is haters of God. It's in the Bible. If that is not in your Bible, throw that Bible away. It's one of the deceitful Bible they are now writing nowadays. Backbiters, and then haters of God. Some of them are journalists, you know. Some of them are lawyers. Some of them are agnostics. Yes, pantheists. Yes, deist, polytheist. And those who say they are atheists, their own is a lie. Because the Bible is only a fool says there's no God. Because they are breathing the air of God and they are saying there's no God. 
Not be saying so. Psalm 14 verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. You woke up in the morning. You see the sun made by God. At night, you see the moon made by God. You enjoy the reign of God. And then you open your big mouth and say, There is no God. God have mercy on you. If it were in the Old Testament, something just draw from the head, mash up your head. Mash up your head. Mm. <laughs> in the New Testament, we are living by grace. So God gives you a long rope to give you a chance to behave yourself. What do you call yourself? You are a degree holder. You are a journalist because you have the privilege to sit behind microphone. You are a lawyer. You are a doctor. You don't have the fear of God. And you act as if God does not exist. And you know only one little finger of God will quench your life. Come on, read the Bible, you see it in Acts of Apostles chapter 12. There was a man called King Herod. He spoke as an orator. And the people clapped for him. They said, this is not the voice of a man. This is the voice of a God. And the man never gave God the glory, no. Because he never gave God the glory. The Bible said, God sent an angel to give only one shot. Only one shot. In his belly. It's in Acts chapter 12. Read it. I'm not making up any story, please. And the angel gave him just one shot and worms ate him up. Done. Come back to the first Samuel. And I hope all of you listening to me today, we are all going to make a covenant of obedience to God. The word is obedience. Abraham became God's friend by obedience. Believe you me. Believe you me. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. That was where God sealed the covenant. He said, because thou hast obeyed my voice, I will make you to possess the gates of your enemy. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. You will not be able to count your prosperity. You will not be able to count your children and your children's children. That's why today we sing a song. Abraham blessings are mine. Abraham blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. Blessed in the night. Abraham's blessings are mine. How can I sing that song? If I'm not faithful to God. Abraham was faithful to God. Abraham was a friend of God. And because Abraham was a friend of God, faithful to God, and even when God asked him for what could have been impossible for him to do, after waiting for a promised child, listen to me, for over 25 years, and God said, take that child and kill but God was to test his love. Whether Abraham has now loved the gift more than the giver. You didn't hear that. God wanted to test him. God is not a murderer. But God said, that child, don't make a mistake and go and take, you know, the, what is the, um, Ishmael. But the one you and Sarah have been waiting for, that is the one. Go and sacrifice for me. You know what Abraham did? <laughs> Abraham did not discuss with Sarah about it, you know. Because if he did tell Sarah, <laughs> Sarah will say, you know what you're going to do, Abraham? Kill me first, then kill the boy. <laughs> because <laughs> Sarah has been waiting for that thing a long time. That Sarah doubted God and Sarah was the one that gave Abraham the suggestion to take up her maid. And when God said, I will still do what I said, Sarah laughed. And the angel said, why is she laughing? He said, no, I didn't laugh. He said, no, you laughed. You doubted it. But I am going to do it anyhow. So when God told him, take the boy, go three days journey. God would have said, go to the backyard and quickly do it. God said, go three days journey. Whether to see whether Abraham was going to change his mind. 
Three days journey. Abraham never changed his mind. They arranged the wood. Arranged everything. He said, son, give me your hand. He tied up the son and put him on the wood. Because he knew how they do it in an idolatrous world. He said, maybe that's what God wants me to do. And when God saw that Abraham lifted up the knife to cut his own son, he held him and said, stop it. Stop it, man. I have seen your obedience. Just as you are about to give your only begotten son, I am going to give my only begotten son to the world. Hallelujah. Take off the, the ram caught in a ticket and sacrifice and let it replace and be the substitute for your son Isaac. Kill and let the blood be the atonement for the boy. But I am going to give my only begotten son because you gave your only begotten son a typology of the Old Testament so that when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29 and verse 36. But let me finish up with this so we can pray. I want to make a covenant of obedience and say, God, I love you. I want to be obedient to you all the rest of my life. When I went to this school, mm. I have learned a lot. This school helped to mature me to God. I, 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 I just became a Christian and mm. I want to know more about God. And uh, you know, I heard about your school and I decided to come here. And being there, I have learned a lot. <laughs> Holy oh, about God, the knowledge of God and what God desires of me mm -hmm. and what I must do. Both evangelizing, living holy and mm -hmm. righteous and doing what God says, being obedient unto his word. Mm -hmm. And it helped me a lot and I have to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, it helped me to help a lot of people to walk holy unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it helped me to pray. Mm -hmm. And it helped me to, 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 to recognize and love people, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and to be able to, to relate to people without getting angry mm -hmm. or showing remorse, you know. Yeah. You know, the word of God says we must live peaceable yeah. with all people and holiness. Yeah. Unless if you don't do this thing, you will not see the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to look for those words in the yeah. Bible. Yes. And apply them to your day of living, yes. you know. Yes, sir. Yes, because you know, I, I, because of your teaching at yes, your sir. school, I read the Bible very much. I read the Bible very much. Amen. I eat the Bible. I eat the Word of God <laughs> and let it digest in my belly. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> for watching today's broadcast we hope this program was a blessing to you feel free to call us for prayer and counseling at 876-923-1040 or 876-631-7108 or you can whatsapp us at 876-451-8509 you can also visit our church location at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11, on Sundays at 9 a.m. You can follow us on our social media platforms for more updates and sermons at Facebook, Deeper Life Bible Church Jamaica, Instagram, Deeper Life Jamaica, and YouTube at Kingdom Life is Deeper Life. Join us next time for the Revival of Truth broadcast. Revival.